Hey all, I would recommend you watch this video before watching this one. Thank you. Good day everyone and welcome back. Today, the man who survived SCP-096. A big thanks to the patrons for keeping this channel going and let's get started. Medical staff briefing concerning incident 096-128. Dr. Stanford was given quite a bit more authority at Site-19 than was likely prudent or wise. When we authorized the SCP-012 cross-testing, we didn't really give too much thought to the possible requests Stanford could make. The lack of oversight led to the death of 31 people. The number may strike you as odd, given that the official death tally was 32, accounting for Dr. Stanford and Director Malin. Well, nothing can be done for Director Malin. But Dr. Stanford's other cross-testing requests have led us to a peculiar circumstance. Tell me, are any of you familiar with SCP-447? The room looked right. The hospital green paint chipped slightly at the floorboards. He turned his head to the right and looked out the window. The sun had a decidedly lime tint to it, and he could swear he smelled mint in the air. He turned back to look at the ceiling. The events of the last few days continued to play over and over. The fact that SCP-012 had led to his nearly dying wasn't especially surprising to him. But what had happened? He cross-tested it with 096, right. And 096 had burst through the room and thrown him into his own bookcases. After that, he didn't remember anything. He tried to recall the melody that SCP-096 had created, but it felt... fuzzy. Huh. You're awake. Dr. Stanford looked over at the figure in the door. Who are you? That's less important. You're trying to recall the melody, yes? Dr. Stanford's eyes went slightly wider. You're in my... Am I dead? Not exactly. You sound like... Dr. Mary Hastings, is that you? No. I am just using a voice, you know, to make things easier for you. Oh, fuck. Yeah, nothing like that moment of realization. The figure walked up to Dr. Stanford and placed a hand on his forehead. You're burning up. I'm going to have to take some stuff, I think. Take what? Nothing you'll miss, I promise. But the thing that put you in the hospital only left you alone because it briefly killed you. I don't want you to die as soon as you wake up and hum a tune. The hand on his forehead burned him. It felt like his whole body was burning. He panicked as he realized the whole room was covered in green slime. It dripped from the ceiling and covered his body. He looked out the window and there wasn't a sun at all, just a glowing orb of green slime floating just above the horizon. You won't feel a thing. I promise. The whole world went green and Minty he fought before he fought nothing at all. SCP-447 Procedural Instructions SCP-447 constantly excretes a green slime. The green slime has a number of therapeutic and practical applications, but must never come into contact with a dead body. A dead body that comes into contact with SCP-447 slime is to be contained inside the site medical ward. Under no circumstances are any statements made by such dead bodies to be acknowledged by staff. Counseling in regards to exposure to dead bodies affected by SCP-447 slime is to be provided on request. Under no circumstances is deliberate contact between SCP-447 produced slime and a dead body to ever be attempted. When Dr. Stanford woke up, he found himself in a hospital bed. No green tint to the paint, no window to a slime-covered world. Of course, there is no window, he thought. This is an underground facility. The last thing he remembered was SCP-096 bursting through his wall and flinging him against his own bookcases. He hadn't had time to react or see anything else, perhaps for the best. Not having seen its face, he'd be safe from retaliation. But why had it attacked him in the first place? Good morning, Doctor. A woman's voice from his bedside startled Stanford. Dr. Stanford tried to look over, but he couldn't turn his head. I can't move my head. He paused and his eyes went wide in horror. I can't feel my legs. Yes, well, you had an accident. We gave you a paralytic to arrest motor function to your lower body until you woke up. Was quite a jostle you took. I didn't want you wrenching your neck and making things worse. 
Dr. Stanford tried to look over again, this time with just his eyes. Can you please move over a bit so I can see who I'm talking to? Dr. Mary Hastings walked around to the foot of the bed. What happened? Did I break my neck? Not exactly. What do you remember about how you got here? I was in my office. A CP-096 came through the wall and tossed me aside to get to Malin. And then? Dr. Stanford kept quiet. Dr. Stanford, were you using a CP-447 in your tea? What? That's ridiculous. Stanford paused. I mean, yes, but it sounds ridiculous now that I say it out loud. Indeed, you're the first dead body to come into contact with SCP-447 and not be insane afterwards. I'm not dead. That... that is, um, actually a point of contention among the medical team. The force of SCP-096's throw was... considerable. You smashed through the bookshelves and then directly into the stone wall behind it. Dr. Stanford tried to look down at his body, but he didn't see anything, which was odd. Even just using his eyes, he ought to have seen his feet. What aren't you telling me? The force of the impact, uh, it destroyed your body. I lied about the paralytics. In my medical opinion, you went, you went, you went splat. Dr. Hastings reached for something from the table next to his bed. Here. She placed a mirror in his line of sight that was angled downward. He saw nothing except for his spine laying on the bed. A faint green slime covered the bones and pulsed with a strange glow. Dr. Stanford closed his eyes. That's enough. The fact that you are at all coherent after contact with 447 is really remarkable. In the past, all contact between 447 and dead bodies has always been after some time has passed. Since you had it in your system when the accident happened, I have to assume you never really fully died. Or died so briefly as to not matter. Fuck. Hastings nodded. Yes, it's a lot to take in. You're a medical marvel, though. We thought about trying to reattach your legs and arms somehow, but the connective tissue was reared against the walls. There was a pause then. Dr. Stanford tried to think about his life and how it had led to this point, but whatever. More important, he imagined, was what's next. So, what now? Well, I'm going to talk to the rest of the medical staff, but I think pending O5 approval, we can release you after some additional tests. Release me how? Well, Steve was thinking about how we could attach your spine to a mobility scooter. Your brain still, remarkably, I might add, sends electrical signals. So there is a surprising number of things we can do by plugging directly into your spine. Dr. Stanford would have shaken his head if he could. Instead, he was forced to imagine that. A spine attached to an electric wheelchair scooting around Site-19's halls. This was going to be an interesting day. While a method of locomotion is under construction, we would like to say that it is not acceptable to refer to Dr. Stanford as a dead body, regardless of your views on how SCP-447 functions. It is additionally not polite to stare at Dr. Stanford, neither is it advisable to comment on the mint smell that accompanies him. His disability is just as serious as anyone else's. Remember that he is still a project director, at least until a disciplinary hearing can be held due to the 096 incident, and perhaps even after. His authority is still equal to all but the site directors, so treat him accordingly. And that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Big thanks to Samarian for writing this for me. Head to his channel and show the man some love. Massive thanks to the patrons for keeping this channel going. And thank you to Sleepy Labeef, Cadet Catboy, Matthias, Deathly Thorium, Luna Wilson, Guardian of Energy, Razman, Splendid the Tear God, Number of the Yeast, Wings of a Meme, and Rick Trexon. Big thanks to the council members, Tyson, Dr. Night Wraith, DTX, Bane, your local foundation agent, Kickerin, Tree, Hunter Killer, Captain Core, and Kibara. And huge thanks to the administrators, Afri Interactive, Techno Ninja, GFHD, Infinite Tune, Kamana, Viger, and Andre Bashert. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all soon. And take care.